Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. So this might, we'll see if this, uh, uh, so I'm trying to get a fixed replay from the end of the losers match. Exit ended up winning it. This is, by the way, BSL season 13, final match of group A. It's going to take me a while to get through all of this just because of the sheer volume of matches and the fact I've got like an hour and a half typically to commentate on Tuesdays, Thursdays, going a little bit bonus here. Uh, this Tuesday, 9 o'clock location, we have Exit starting as the Black Terran. 3 o'clock location, we have Master Ray starting as the Teal Protoss. This is once again going to be on Heartbreak Ridge, which could be a very interesting match between these. I feel like in this, uh, I'm wondering what the percentages are, actually, as far as old school uh, play. But I feel like maybe in the current meta, this could be advantageous for Terran, which is controversial to say just because of the having to walk uphill on those spokes into mines. Uh, Master Ray, pretty good player. I, I'm going to favor him in this matchup as well, but again, I don't put anything past exit uh, between the two. This is a difficult... He's a difficult opponent to go up against, I think, for exit, because exit has incredible game sense, but Master Ray also has... I think you could make an argument, because he plays with so uh, such low APM, like that he wins games purely off game sense. Uh, looks like he's going to go pylon gateway to start instead of any anything like a 14 command center or uh, anything along those lines. Exit going to go ahead and seal his front door uh, front door in. It's a bit of an exit or a bit of an exit. It's a bit of a weird exit to try to cover because of uh, yeah the northern aspect of it and just yeah you can see it's just not like a pure gap where it's like anyway the front door uh, is challenging. That is going to deny information to Master Ray. And Master Ray plays very similar to Exit in the style where he uh, is very, very strong when he has that scouting information, can be responsive, has more challenge against his opponents. And I think that's just true of all Blue Bear players, but some more than others. And I think for both of these guys, that tends to be the case. Master Ray having that probe go to the scout across the north. And let's see if, can he scoot through this? Yeah, wall's tight. I was trying to think, it, it, by the way, it's I'm trying to think of like there needs to be like a little rhyme where it's like barracks before depot, no people can get in or something like that. But supply depot before barracks and it's, yeah, I can't think of the, the rhyme to make it work. But you flip this, the probe would be able to, to sneak through. Anyway, but Master Ray attacking that natural expansion. He's going to go ahead and drop a cybernetics core, skip the zealot, seeing that front door seal. We do have a single SCV on gas, which suggests the exit's just going to go for that factory into potential siege tank expansion style build. We'll see if Master Ray responds to this by... He is building an initial Dragoon. Exit managing to pull a Marine because they spawn on the exterior. That's kind of a, another disadvantage of this is you can see how they can spawn underneath. Uh, yeah, it can be dangerous to deal with that. He's starting... And this is such a wide choke to try to defend. Makes sense he's going for the factory siege tech uh, starter. But anyway, first Dragoon's going to be produced. Range being upgraded. If Master Ray even gets a handful... Of Dragoons. This is such a wide open area to engage with that. Might end up with a sizable attack vector in the mid game. This SCV making its way across. Master Ray look, looks like after that second Dragoon is going to go ahead and try to grab his Nexus. Potentially pause Dragoon production to get that second command center up. Two Marines in that bunker. Exit going to go ahead and grab his command center. Looks like ahead, barely ahead of Master Ray. And is probably going to need to yeah, pull some, well, taking a little bit of initial damage. That SCV able to sneak through only a single Dragoon, and it wasn't blocking on that corner. So going to be able to wander in, see lack of gateways, see the lack of a citadel, a citadel of a dune, and also got a good look at that natural expansion. Looks like that SCV is just going to resign itself to exploding in the bottom right-hand corner otherwise, though. It makes me wonder, like, what do they put in the SCVs that just makes them explode so often and... I know they don't really care about their workforce, but do they? It's almost like one of those things. Like, did do you, did you have to make them to explode? You'd think you would want them to like, if they're taking damage, just fall apart since they're going to be on the battlefield rather than it's like having a marine nearby or fighting your SCV next to you just or a siege tank. You know. Anyway, it's like why build everything explicitly to explode like a little mini nuke? Maybe it's just because everybody in the Confederacy or I guess I'm not sure if. Uh, in the lore, what side would it be? But it's like, yeah, it just seems like everything that Terran builds, it's like, it's gotta, if it explodes or starts working, it's gotta explode in a gigantic ball of flame. That's the way we gotta do it, guys. Vulture wandering in. 
creating a little bit of disruption, but not getting a lot accomplished. And an immediate third Nexus being grabbed behind this. Master Rage just holding a single Dragoon at that natural expansion to go ahead and push into a mid-game economic lead. Siege check being upgraded. Armory being tacked on as well. And it looks like there is an engineering bay being built on the high ground. And an observatory as well. I like this play from Master A, just testing that front door. It's difficult for a Terran to cope with this because sometimes what Protoss can do is they can hide Dragoons out here. I feel like it's almost worthwhile to expend an SCV past the Dragoon just to make sure that, you know, they're not... Anyway, the mineral field being mined out to provide reinforcements on that corner. Probes already being transferred to this northern base. So Master Ray going to leap well ahead. Gateways being plopped down. And Exit looks like he's going to end up yeah, significantly behind. He's expecting potential Reaver, something along those lines. He skipped Academy, so he doesn't have uh, good scouting information to know what he's up against behind this. Engineer Bay floating forward. Helping, yeah, he's playing very, very defensively here. <clears throat> but this is three Nexus behind a single gateway. Two gateways tacked on behind this. Master Ray tends to favor more of the get an economic lead, go for a mass gateway, and press behind it. And I do believe that Master Ray's macro is uh, ahead of Exit. Exit's game sense failing him a little bit here. He's just trying to seal in, go for missile turret. It could be possible that this is part of a long-term game plan where Exit's just, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice early economy and play for more of a... A long-term thing. Pylon seal here to the north for Master Rate. Moving that observer to go ahead and get eyes inside exit space. Still no comsat. There are some turrets in the way to try to deal with that. Charm booster being upgraded. Second factor being dropped. Yeah, you can see everything exit was thinking was like potential reaver drop, potential DT drop, potential something along those lines. The observer just going to be able to walk in here. The Goliath actually trying to shadow it. But again, without the Academy, without Comsat, uh, Master Ray is just going to have full eyes on absolutely everything and able to just walk past. So now the Academy being built uh, fairly late. A Starport being snuck. It looks like that Observer going to get wiped out. It's not going to see that Starport. So, so now Exit, potentially realizing he's in a uh, bad situation. Fourth Gateway being built. Now they're... A Forge and a Citadel of Adun being dropped. I'm not sure that Exit has an opportunity to even deal with this. There's a shuttle uh, with the couple Zelts to deal with any Siege Tanks that are pressing out. Master Ray starting to go for like a pseudo-contain. And actually, there's not a lot of Siege Tanks on this front. Dragoon's taking some free shield shots uh, behind the midst of this. Bunker being cleared out for Exit to allow potentially more reinforcements to press through the front. We do have three factories. Two Sea Shanks and Goliaths here in the backfield. Again, still anticipating still anticipating potential drops. And I'm wondering if the starport was... Okay, so there's the control tower behind all this. Exit's build just feels a little bit slow. He's behind economically uh, considerably. Looks like he was trying to get rid of that just to get his commsat station down. Um... And I'm wondering if Exit's plan is to just, like, try to hold on, try to get three bases, maybe try to slow Master Ray's economy down by getting a, a dropship. I don't know, put some Goliaths behind it. That uh, could do some damage here in the upper right. Looks like a cannon's already being warped in to that corner. Also, I think a probe's going to plop a pylon here in the upper left. Already a cannon warping in here as well. So I'm not sure how much harassment would even be effective in the midst of this. Exit's kind of setting up as though, yeah, there's the third, there's the command center to go ahead and grab the third. I think he's just going to try to slow play this. He does have level one weapons, and I think he just wants to isolate on three bases, get his upgrades up, and try to play from there. But Master Ray grabbing that quick third nexus, I think is going to end up with the overall, especially with kind of this uh, starport plopped in between um, science facility being plopped down. With all this, this was built a little bit early before level one weapons came on uh, online before it was really needed. <clears throat> um, exit, yeah, now clearing out, and yeah, he's going to try to take that base to the bottom right. I think Master Ray already has 
a supply lead, and I'm expecting that to just grow. Getting level one weapons. The one thing for Master Ray is sometimes he can be negligent. Ooh, and this is ballsy. He's going to go ahead and take that fourth expansion in the upper left-hand base ahead of Exit's third. Exit still has that command center. Yeah, just um, holding position until that mineral field's cleared. Engineer Bay scouting that to tr just try to get eyes. But you can see Master Ray is happy to play this macro-wise. And that advantage is starting to grow. He's already plopped down some additional gateways. There's the Arbiter, Arbiter Tribunal warping in. And a second forge being plopped down. So as far as Master Ray's stereotypical game plan, and Exit actually moving out with some troops right now, so it looks like he's trying to take position. So yeah, he's moving forward to try to shove Master Ray back to make it a little bit easier to hold this command center to the, the south. Master Ray just kind of being annoying at this. Eh? He's still actually got enough of a supply lead where he might be able to crash down into this. Some turrets being planted on the low ground. This isn't going to bother Exit being able to go ahead and plant this, plop this command center down and transfer SCVs along that rear path. Um, but... Just forcing Exit to slow play this, uh, Master Ray still might be able to, yeah, just careen forward economically and play Gateway Man in the midst of this. Observer floating down, getting wiped out. Seeing a lot of those turrets in position, I don't know if Master Ray realizes that, yeah, that this base is exposed. Now realizing that this base is exposed, this is a long reinforcement route to go. The siege tanks able to hit some of the Zalts from the south. Exit backing off that turret actually taking some friendly fire and that zealot going to die to a battle SCV with six health master Ray cutting off reinforcements he's still got two zealots in the shuttle to do additional harassment but again he's sitting on four base and happy to let exit sit behind this 152 supply to 134 master Ray also again with a decent amount oh it looks like that shuttle getting wiped out with two zealots in it and a handful of mines being plopped down, another turret being planted, and this is kind of clever. Sealing up that front door, that the siege tanks to the low ground, even though it's like a misfire rate. Well, oh, actually able to just, I forgot. That's open. So Dragoon's just walking in to disrupt this third. SCV's once again going to have to flee. A mine dragged into one of the Dragoons, but that's, again, longer disruption. So effectively, this is going to be <coughs> two bases for exit versus four bases for Master Ray. These Dragoons on this ridge are preventing reinforcements from getting there. This command center is going to have to flee to the north, so it's going to be... This is just Master Ray doing a masterful job of doing harassment around that third to prevent exit from continuing that economic lead. Some more siege tanks finally getting here. They should be able to siege short. Yeah, and create a, a bit of a blockade behind this and clear out these Dragoons finally. To go ahead and take that fourth. But Master Ray already taking that 12 o'clock location. He's got every, practically every base on the map that Exit doesn't. He's going to go ahead and grab two more Nexus behind this. And filter in a bunch of additional Dragoons. Maybe to take out these Siege Tanks on the high ground. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I hate that feeling. <laughs> ah! Um, this command center getting wiped out. And now Exit. Oof. Exit in the red. Yeah, he has uh, decent upgrades behind this. Level 2, level 1. But Master Ray can afford to lose a lot of stuff and still hold this map. This is, I think, losing that base is a trigger now for Exit to go ahead and try to press forward and win this match. Just with what ground troops he has. The Vultures getting well ahead of those siege tanks, running into a cloaked army. So eating a lot of damage, trying to get mines down desperately, and it's just a beeline, yeah, with siege tanks and everything else. So Master Ray will win this match if he can hold the front. Dragoons, in the meantime, up on this high ridge, might be able to get some damage done there. But Exit does not care at this stage. He just wants to win it on raw troop count. Now keep in mind, a lot of this supply is in probes. A great stasis on the Ford siege tank line. Master Ray needs to macro behind this. The Arbiter pulling back. There's no science vessel to support this, so it's got to be done with, with CompSat alone, but Master Ray does not have a lot of Dragoons to reinforce this, so Exit, despite going for more of a slow play third style, as soon as his siege tanks on stasis, he still might have enough troops to just dive in and wipe out everything Master Ray has. Now the question is, can he wipe out a lot of these bases that are at exterior locations 
to make it count? Or will Master Ray just reinforce rapidly enough to swat this uh, attack army down? Still waiting on this unstasis. Some turrets being planted at the forward location. Goliath's able to take that Arbiter down. I think these are still slow zealots. I don't think they have leg speed. Just walking forward. No mind drags happening. Ah, oh, there was a huge mind drag. Master Ray, it looks like he's getting on top of these siege tanks. Some more reinforcements making their way forward. So Exit is beyond all in at this stage. But Master Ray has a solid enough economy. Despite having uh, no speed zealots. Now those Dragoons going to go ahead and wander up and start attacking that natural expansion. So as soon as this cleans up, is cleaned up from Master Ray, Exit should be able to exit... Well, Exit will be forced to exit this match. And the Dragoons continuing to pile into this, creating a big amount of problems. The Zealots getting the surround. All sorts of siege tanks getting wiped out. And yeah, that should be it. Expecting GG momentarily. As the forward attack force just completely decimated. The second expansion looks like a lot, the Dragoons are going to die on this high ground. But not before a lot of SCVs were wiped out at that natural expansion. The main is mined out. So it's one mining base here for exit. And Master Ray's economy is, again, just got a beastly amount of supply behind this. Still a uh, decent upgrade advantage for exit. But that is basically it. He's trying to grab another command center. This is a desperation tactic. It looks like a vulture did manage to sneak to that 12 o'clock base. Two pylons being built. Neither of those are cannons. So my, at least he's going to be able to do some damage right there. But Master Ray just walking through the rest of this in the meantime. Careening down on what could be the third expansion. There's Dragoons hanging, hanging out there. It's kind of like, I think this game is over. It's just a matter of time. It's like, how long does it take for Exit to realize it? Is the next question. Zealots peeling into that natural expansion. It looks like they're going to kill that SCV that was building that command center. Complete breach. In the midst of all of this. Vultures looks like a pirate victory here. The Vultures are going to be able to take that 12 o'clock base out. Tons of cannons in that upper left and plenty of cannons in that pylon wall. Going to prevent anything else otherwise. More consats being dropped. Arbiter moving in. Actually attacking these siege tanks. Let's see if that turret gets taken care of. Master Ray actually overcommitting troops a little bit here. So we're going to end up losing this uh, forward army and an Arbiter a little bit. But the thing is, is he can afford to lose these troops. Where Exit really can't afford to continue with this. Already has a, another group, another army ready to go. A Dark Templar out here. No kills. Mostly mine cleared, as far as I can tell. In the midst of this. And the Vulture Army able to sneak in and it looks like disrupt some economy in the upper right. So Exit actually, so I take it back. Exit. Suddenly making a match of this. Granted, he's still way behind economically. But he has managed to force a bit of economic disruption. He's now taking that command center. I still feel like this is too little too late uh, overall. The Vulture's trying to sneak through and be a distraction. It looks like they're going to get wiped out. Got a lot accomplished with everything they were doing, though. So that 12 o'clock base was wiped out. Up right-hand corner uh, disrupted. Mains, by the way, mined out uh, for Master Ray. He's, con he's progressing with his upgrades as well. So that uh, upgrade advantage, it looks like level 2 weapons, level 1 armor, which I think meets, yeah, meets exits, although exit is proceeding uh, with the upgrades. But Master Ray just needs to regroup. Uh, he'll have to maybe eat some mines. In the midst of this. No Arbiters out in the field. Looks like he's distance mining at the 12 o'clock location. But he's at 200 supply. Dark Templar just watching some mines. Going to mine drag back into that siege tank. Get a bit of damage done there. Where is Master Ray's army? Is it mostly just being produced? So he's got this army here. A little bit of an army here at the natural expansion. He's got 200 supply. No 70 of it is probes. Looking for... He's got Arbiters in the midst of this. Yeah, I'm just looking for where that supply is. Feels like he should have a larger army uh, somewhere here. Engaging from the north. Also creating across the 6 o'clock base. Looks like he is getting uh, level 1 air weapons. So he's thinking about potentially 
swapping back to carries after this. Not that that's needed. Single stasis on that siege tank. And again, pressing exit back to his natural expansion. Exit knowing he's not going to be able to hold that command center. So now exit, after getting all of that last hurrah out of his system, going to call GG right there. So for people on the Twitch stream, I'll let you know. I think I'm going to try to cast some of these just because there's so many games. I'm going to try to cast some of these tonight. Uh, to just, I guess, continue with Hasu League. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this. Nevertheless, we still have the last two matches of Group A to filter through. I don't know time what time I'll have. Minnie is beating me to that bike hearth. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.